Well, well, well. Good for you, Ryan. But is T-Mobile acquiring Mint Mobile good for you, the consumer? Maybe you were thinking of switching to Mint Mobile or you already are a customer. Whichever boat you happen to be in, here's what the T-Mobile acquisition of Mint Mobile could mean for you. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by talking a little bit about Mint Mobile, RIP, maybe. So earlier this week, you probably saw the news that T-Mobile had acquired Mint Mobile for $1.35 billion as part of a cash and stock deal. T-Mobile actually purchased Mint Mobile's parent company, Kyena Group, effectively giving them ownership of Ultra Mobile and Plum. Ryan Reynolds, who owned an estimated 25% of the company and will make around $337 million from the sale, made this video announcement on Twitter. Ryan followed up by saying he never dreamt he'd own a wireless company and sell it to T-Mobile. But here we are. And as someone who's reviewed Mint Mobile and talked about it more than a few times on this channel, I wanted to give some of my thoughts on what the future might hold. First, let's talk about the service. Mint Mobile has been operating as an MVNO or Mobile Virtual Network Operator. Basically, Mint operates by renting space on T-Mobile's network towers. As an MVNO, if the towers in a given area get congested during peak times, like at a sporting event, the MVNO customers get deprioritized, resulting in slower data speeds or occasional dropped calls. As of the filming of this video, there's still a lot we don't know in the details in the deal between Mint Mobile and T-Mobile, but one thing is fairly certain, and that's that your service and the coverage should remain about the same, or at least it just won't get worse. Mint Mobile has always used T-Mobile's network towers, so there shouldn't be any changes there. My guess is that Mint Mobile and Mint customers will still be treated like MVNO customers, a lot like the way Visible works on Verizon or Cricket for AT&T. A budget option that comes with the caveat that your connection will get less priority than the primary, higher paying customers. As for Mint Mobile, I don't think it evaporates or disappears or goes anywhere. I think T-Mobile is going to keep it as a budget option, kind of like a sub brand of T-Mobile that can offer MVNO like service. So basically budget cell phone service with the caveat that you're not going to get the priority on the network. I think they're just going to keep it sort of as its separate own thing, even though it is owned by T-Mobile now. It will have separate branding. And I think them keeping Ryan Reynolds in a quote, creative role and some of his current team around him means the messaging and unique ads aren't going anywhere. I say that because T-Mobile has 113 million customers in the US, whereas Mint has around two or three million. T-Mobile didn't buy Mint Mobile for its customer base. They didn't buy it because they needed or wanted more customers. What they did is they added basically two or 3% more customers, but that's really not going to change their bottom line. But the branding and having Ryan Reynolds do the promotion is where the real value is at. Mint Mobile's customers trust Mint Mobile. It was like a rebel pirate ship in a sea of mega corporations and really dull other MVNOs. And T-Mobile is hoping by purchasing Mint Mobile that they will acquire some of that direct to consumer goodwill. So now the second thing you're probably wondering about is what's going to happen to all the pricing. In his announcement, Ryan and T-Mobile CEO Mike Seaver said that Mint's $15 pricing would continue, but let's listen closely. They're not saying that the current plans and rates will stay the same, just that there will be $15 pricing. T-Mobile purchased Mint Mobile for $1.35 billion. Mint Mobile was already paying T-Mobile for use of its network space. So really, this is just a drop in the bucket for T-Mobile's annual US budget, which is like $170 billion a year. So T-Mobile gets Mint Mobile relatively inexpensively, and I see it more as a play to compete with AT&T and Verizon's popular in-house MVNOs like Visible and Cricket. There were rumors Mint Mobile was shopping itself around to other major carriers, and perhaps that pushed T-Mobile to grab them, lest Mint get scooped up by a competitor. But because there are so many competing budget brands by the other major carriers, T-Mobile isn't likely to dissolve or ruin the good press and standing Mint has with its customer base looking for a budget sell service. And you can see a glimpse of this in the media rounds that Mike Sievert and Ryan Reynolds have been doing, going around talking about how this acquisition is good for Mint Mobile and how the added money from T-Mobile is going to allow them to expand Mint Mobile and make it better. And they want you to believe too that all of that is going to mean that it is better for you. Looking into my pricing crystal ball, my take is that pricing probably isn't going to change very much, at least until the end of the year when the acquisition is completed. 
I think after that, the pricing will remain relatively the same. So you'll have a $15 plan, you'll have a $30 plan, but I think what you're going to see is the offerings that are changed. So you might have that $15 4 gigabyte plan still there, but they might get rid of the $20 10 gigabyte a month plan, for example, and make a $30 plan and have that have like 50 gigabytes or something that's really enticing that'll make you kind of jump from that 15 gigabyte plan, sorry, that $15 plan and jump right up into the next tier up. Kind of like how Consumer Cellular offers a one gigabyte plan for $20 a month, they know 99% of people won't get. Rather, most people will choose the next option up, the 10 gigabyte $35 a month plan. I think after the acquisition is completed, Mint Mobile's plans just won't be as sweet, but they won't completely disappear either. Take for example, Metro by T-Mobile, another cell provider they acquired after a merger in 2013. They still maintain separate branding and slightly discounted pricing, with the caveat that Metro customers won't get priority on the T-Mobile network when things get busy. The way things stand now, T-Mobile's prepaid plans start at around $50 a month, Metro at $40 a month, and Mint at $15 a month. And that pricing structure, the way T-Mobile has everything set up now, leads me to believe that they're going to keep Mint Mobile on as just their budget offering. It will still be prepaid and have its own branding, but certain little things might change, like it might be called Mint Mobile by T-Mobile now. But like I said, the deals probably won't be as sweet as they were before. They'll still be inexpensive, just not as inexpensive as they are now, and some of the current plans might change, which offer you less data for more money. Mint Mobile's family plans and referral plans will likely get gobbled up by T-Mobile, and at some point, when your plan is up for renewal, there will be new terms to accept. I would think within one to three years, the current plans won't be grandfathered anymore, and you'll be forced to switch to T-Mobile's new Mint Mobile plans, whatever those might be. Like I said in the beginning of this video, there's still a lot we don't know in the details of the deal between T-Mobile and Mint Mobile, but personally, the way I see Mint Mobile is sort of like lightning in a bottle. It filled an MVNO space at a time when there were just three major carriers. There still are just three major carriers in the US, but a lot, a lot of other boring and very cheesy other MVNO options. Then came a charismatic spokesperson and part owner that gave Mint Mobile incredible name recognition. It's a budget carrier that feels very premium because of its marketing strategy, especially as Ryan Reynolds, who is very personable, got more and more popular. But as an MVNO, Mint Mobile always was going to be relying on someone else's towers. They were either going to be an MVNO on T-Mobile's network or an MVNO on someone else's network. In the end, T-Mobile decided to buy the branding and the spokesperson and those 3 million customers from Mint Mobile who are now going to be T-Mobile customers. Things won't be as good as they were before. There's less MVNO competition now, and that small company disrupting the status quo with its clever business strategy is now gone. The best we can hope for as consumers is that T-Mobile won't muck it up too much, too soon. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any thoughts about the Mint Mobile acquisition, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I will see you in the next video.